Hi and welcome, this is Robert Inklaar and I'm here with the first explainer on how to compare income levels across countries. First, it's helpful to define what we mean by income here and more specifically that is gross domestic product. So that means total expenditure within a country's borders. Um, that can be expenditure on food, on cars, on education, public transport, etc. Um, here it's helpful, as we'll see, to distinguish between, on the one hand, the price of each product, P, and the quantity consumed, Q. So the number of cars times the price of a car gives the total spending on cars in the, in the economy. A useful feature of gross domestic product is that it's also in, equal to the total income generated using labor and capital and the total value added generated in the economy. But for the present purposes, let's focus on expenditure. Now, if we compare, want to compare income across countries based on GDP per capita, GDP per person uh, in, the, in the economy, um, we, of course, quickly run into the issue that, uh, that there is, there's different currencies. And um, as you can see, that, that, that uh, comparing those numbers as they are, uh, is, is fairly meaningless. Um, so as a first step, we can uh, use the, the exchange rate to the dollar to put them at least on a comparable footing. Um, and this shows that the United States has the highest GDP per capita of 60,000 uh, and uh, Indonesia comes out lowest at below 4,000. However, is this the right way of comparing uh, income levels across countries. Um, and what I'll explain in a bit more is that this is not the right way to go. We, what we actually want to do is look at purchasing power. So how much can you buy with the currency in a particular country? So the, the current example, uh, this example ex, uh, illustrates this issue. So it compares for the same set of countries, the price of a loaf of bread and the price of a haircut, all expressed in dollars using the exchange rate. And what this shows is that the price of a loaf of bread does not vary all that much. It's, it's, a, it's a little over a dollar in China and Indonesia. It's closer to a dollar fifty, maybe two dollars uh, in the other countries like the Netherlands or Germany. Um, but these differences are comparatively modest compared to the price differences for haircuts. Uh, you can get your haircut in Indonesia for $2.50, but that same haircut uh, will set you back um, by $15 to $20 in these other countries. Note that these are prices of men's haircuts. Uh, ladies might have to pay more. Um, now, what this shows is that uh, if you have a dollar uh, that will buy you more bread, uh, but especially more haircuts uh, in China and Indonesia. And this uh, is a systematic pattern. Prices tend to be lower in low-income countries, um, and especially so for countries that are uh, non-traded. So, yeah, so loaves of bread can be traded, so the, the scope for price differences for arbitrage is comparatively limited. To get the haircuts, uh, the, the cheap haircuts, you'd have to travel to Jakarta and uh, get your haircut there. So that $2.40 is not uh, attainable if you're actually living in the Netherlands. Now, these, this is just two products. It's, it's bread and it's haircuts, uh, but this uh, holds more broadly. <clears throat> um, and we'd actually like a single number to tell us how much uh, it would cost to buy a basket of goods in the Netherlands compared to um, that same basket in Germany, in China and Indonesia. And when we talk about a basket of goods, we mean all the products that are being bought in a country. Yeah? So recall that when talking about GDP, we talked about, the, uh, we talked about the, the spending on all these different products. Now, that's the basket of goods we're thinking about. So all the bread, all the haircuts, all the education, all the health care. And uh, we want to know the prices of that so that we can compare the 
price of those baskets across countries. Now, as you can see here, if we get such a basket uh, price level, this purchasing power parity, the PPP, um, in, the, in the new column added, you see that uh, uh, prices vary uh, clearly. And here in this example for 2017, prices were lower in Netherlands, Germany and Belgium by about 10 to 15 percent compared to the United States. Uh, so that meant that uh, uh, that's uh, that you you can buy more products uh, with a dollar in in the Netherlands or in Belgium than you could with that same dollar in the United States. But if you look at China and especially Indonesia, the differences are quite stark. Um, so the prices in Indonesia uh, are only about one third of the price levels of the, of the United States. So with a dollar, uh, you can your dollar goes three times as far in Indonesia as it does in the United States. Now this matters, of course, greatly for the comparison we sketched before, because adjusting for these price differences then shows that countries with lower income, such as China and Indonesia here, uh, are actually uh, notably uh, better off. Uh, when correcting for price differences, then if this correction is not applied. Now, putting this in, in, uh, in a little more equation form, if we have the nominal GDP of a country, as we had started off with, so total spending on all goods and services in the economy, then we can define the, the, the purchasing power parity, the PPP, as a function of the prices in the two countries and, and the relative trying to get an overall relative price level. Now, finally, that gives us real GDP. So dividing the nominal GDP number by this purchasing power parity. Um, as a final step, we can then compare GDP per capita as shown here for, uh, in China relative to the United States or the relative real GDP per capita is shown here as 24% uh, of the US level in China. And again, this is for 2017. Um, and here's our uh, next table, is the full table, but now with, in the column headers, the, um, uh, the, the variables that we just defined. So that concludes this first explainer, how to compare income levels across countries uh, by correcting for differences in prices with purchasing power parities. Thank you.